This will be episode one of doing some operating install operating system installations on real hardware. Uh, episode one is OpenBSD 6.7. The purpose of this is to look at how long it takes to get to what I consider a bare minimum usable system. A little bit of what comes with it. We're not going to go super in depth into that. Um, and also how it works on this particular piece of hardware, which is an AMD 8350. 32 gigs memory, uh, an M.2 SATA USB, uh, I'm sorry, SSD. Uh, we'll be installing from USB and see how things go. So let's fire up the installer and get started with OpenBSD 6.7. Uh, again, I do apologize that we're just doing the phone at the screen routine. Uh, hopefully everything will be clear enough. Uh, the, unfortunately, the aspect ratio is not quite the same. I'm um, using my lowest resolution monitor I have on hand here, which is, well, that's widescreen, which is, uh, what is it, 1440 by 900. We're going to do an I for install. Take the default keyboard. Um, and it is correctly detected uh, my various network interfaces. So we have ALC0, uh, the real text a zero and one on that card. So we're just going to do ALC zero. It's the only one connected at the moment. I'm trying to type in the dark here to limit glare. Give it an IP address and a net mask. And we're done. I'll give it a default route and my domain, which is home.lan and a name server. Let's get a password in here. Prompted for root passwords. Yes, we want to start SSH by default. I don't want to start uh, the X Windows system uh, by default. I want to be able to log in on the console. And also do not want to change the default console to COM0. That is wonderful that they asked because for a headless machine, I really might want that. And we'll create a user here. User demo. And I do want to allow root login just for this. We're going to do SD0, but let me just confirm that. Question mark will, will show what details are. So SD0 is our 120, well, it reports as 111 gig. So we'll do SD0. Hang on. So it formerly had Linux on it, so we're going to do whole disk. And a, a second here on the file system layout. It's very classic a layout where the different file systems are broken out. Obviously, home's broken out, but here we get user sources separate, user local, user x11, and user, and of course, var and temp are, are also separate. I really like this layout. Uh, for a classic non-ZFS uh, Unix file system layout. So, well done, um, OpenBSD. So we're going to just take the auto layout because I think it's broken up nicely. So 16 gigs should give us plenty in user local where software goes and the home. So we're not going to be doing a whole lot with this. So we're done there. Uh, we're going to want to select disk, I believe, to see what sets we can install from. And it's not mounted. And let's see, SD1, yeah. And A, a partition. And take the default path. And I want to install all the sets here, right? No reason not to. So it's going along pretty quickly. So we get the the kernel, the MP kernel uh, base here. So I currently use OpenBSD. The only use I have, the only machine I currently have running OpenBSD is the firewall box here. Uh, and it's a little old. Uh, it's only 100 megabits. So my, even though I have 150 megabit uh, internet service, I uh, only get a, really a little bit less than 100 megabits through. But that is two of the big dif differentiating factors for OpenBSD are one, the security very secure, and to the firewall it uses PF. And there's some cool things you can do with PF. I currently geo-block um, 
and that's really easy to do. Um, and uh, try attempts on SSH with a, a variable timeout, right? So the more you try, the longer that timeout gets and it locks you out after a certain time. So we're done installing sets. So given I did a, a minute or so of introduction, we're only about four minutes in, we're almost done the install. So pretty quick. We do want to reboot, and I will pull out the USB stick as we go. So hopefully this is this is readable here. I do apologize about any glare. I can't be in total darkness here. But let's see what we can do. USB stick is removed. Let's see if we boot correctly. And we get the bootloader up, let it uh, auto pick up. I like we get boot messages on a, in a text mode. I really found it annoying the modern trend of uh, Linux to put a you know a graphical screen on there. I mean, you want to see this stuff. It's informative. You see things are chugging along. Uh, it makes more sense than a progress bar in my mind. So it's doing its first, uh, the RC dot first time, and it's going to get some firmware. Um, so the one we care about, I think, here is the Radeon firmware. And uh, that means we're probably going to need a reboot because it didn't pick up the the frame buffer, right? So this has a, some sort of Radeon card in it. So it didn't pick that up for the frame buffer. So we'll need to do a reboot. And it's letting us know that there are some patches. Not going to worry about the patches at the moment. But let's reboot to hopefully get a better frame buffer. That'll eat up a, a minute or so of, of time here, but uh, I think that'll look nicer. And if we want to run X, it will certainly be better. So it might be handy to uh, to look down the road and share some tips with PF, uh, the firewall, because uh, it is really nice. Um, one of the things I wish Illumos had was PF. Um, it has IPF, which is not quite as, uh, as modern. So here we go. We've got a new console font. We're obviously using the, the right frame buffer, not just the BIOS uh, font. Hopefully that's not, not too much of a little flare there. So let's see what we have uh, going on. So a couple of things I want to look for to make sure we have a usable system is, do we have Perl? And what version? So we have 5.30. Uh, that's good. Do we have Make? We do have Make. And what version it is? That's obviously a BSD Make, obviously. Do we have GMake? We don't. Uh, so we'll install that as part of the set. What compilers do we have? Um, CC is Clang. So we got Clang 8. Uh, do we have GCC? And we've got an old 4.2 GCC. So we want to install GMake. And of course it doesn't come with Emacs. So we want to install GMake and Emacs for our package from the package system. And after that we'll put in a Perl module uh, with cpan. Uh, provided cpan is here, hopefully we don't have to install it. So we'll do a package add emacs and we get a prompt for what type of emacs. We'll do gtk3. I imagine this will pull down quite a bit of stuff. Because A it's emacs and B we wanted gtk3. I like their their frame buffer console font. It's got a nice uh, nice round look to it. Um, very nice little little bits and pieces like that. And my preference is not to go directly into X, but rather get a, a console, um, you know, text console. Um, maybe that's kind of 
antiquated. Um, you know, even on my Spark station, so I don't go directly into X, or in that case, open windows, but uh, well, that's been a, a preference, I suppose. Um, I think the last time I did this, and I, I currently don't run X on my headless uh, firewall, obviously, but that you have to do the uh, display manager. So it's uh, Xeno DM uh, because they correctly think that running, say, start X is, has a, some security issues. So I do want to keep consistent for the tests for the future candidates here, right? Which will be FreeBSD and Illumos, probably Triblix. We'll throw a Linux in there, maybe one of the corporate -y CentOS um, things, just to see how long it takes to get up to a usable system, uh, and you know what's some of the stuff that comes with. So uh, if you can think of anything here, let me know uh, any others you want to see. But right now it's FreeBSD 12, Triblix, the latest. Maybe CentOS 8, which I've yet to play with CentOS 8. So we've got Emacs. Um, and we want to search for a package. We can do a package info q and look for make. Let's see what it's called. Okay, it's gmake. Okay, so we now have gmake. And now we want to do cpam. So we can get a Perl module installed. Let's do, and we'll do log for Perl. So nicely, it includes uh, CPAN, which is not a universal uh, universal thing. Not everything, in, uh, for whatever reason, some things don't include CPAN or include a broken CPAN. So this is working. Uh, obviously, you're doing anything serious, Perl-wise, or any of the dynamic languages, you really should install that in its own separate area. So you don't get clobbered by bits and pieces tied into the operating system. Uh, one of the benchmarks we'll be running is some Perl benchmarks, uh, because that is important to me. Also R, uh, the R language for doing a little machine learning. We'll test some of that. find uh, a great deal of comfort in watching Perl module tests pass. So we've got log for Perl. Uh, let's start up the uh, window manager, or the display manager, I should say. XDM, equivalent, whatever it is, modern. Um, and that it is, XenoDM. With the RC control dash F. And we want to and we have our display manager here. And as our demo user. And it may not be showing up on camera, but we get the nice retro X, you know, thatching in the back. And this is looks it is FVWM. So a very nice and capable windowing system. So that concludes it. We are, minus my chatter at the beginning, just a little over 10 minutes to go from zero to having a system where we can compile C software and uh, use Emacs, right, Emacs, and uh, put a Perl module in there. So that is a big win. Uh, this is super late, late. Let's see how much uh, space we've taken up here. So a little under a gig is used on user local, and on user we've only used also a little under a gig. So a nice lightweight uh, lightweight system that is complete for the basics, uh, and there's a bunch of packages available. Let's see if, uh, if a browser is available. We get Chromium. Spider Monkey and what else? Firefox. So 
you get a few choices for uh, for browsers. Um, so what else we might want to look for? Okay, so I guess um, see if G Fortran is in there. No G, no Fortran. That's a little, a little annoying, but um, could be added later. Well, I guess that concludes it for this one. As I, I always say, please. Uh, we know if there's something else you'd like to see here. This uh, system will be up for a few days because I have to go and compile the list of what benchmarks I want to run on each one and do some setup. And the reason I'm starting with this is A, it's simple, it's fast, um, you know, we could get it done here in about 15 minutes. And it will have in some ways, because it is so secure, the, the kind of the perhaps most constrained in terms of what benchmarks I might be able to put on it easily. Um, and some of the benchmarks may seem, you know, a little oddball, uh, but they're things I do regularly. So I want to see if there is any difference. Some of it, there shouldn't be any difference because it's all, you know, emulated CPU time, right? Very little I.O. or anything. So they, they all should be the same within uh, a little bit of a noise level. Uh, as always, thanks for watching here. Uh, leave any questions or comments below. The other thing to mention is I'd like to do a little Q&A live stream. So if you think of any uh, more general questions, uh, do let me know on that. Thank you.